Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will actually continue with the universal constructions. Uh, so, now uh, we will see the construction of exterior algebra, which is uh, very much rela related to the alternating tensors or the exterior products. So, again uh, we can actually just uh, define it using the uh, goic modulo some uh, two sided ideal generated by some relations. So, what uh, we are interested in actually if we take uh, the product of uh, elements from the capital V, so that should be thought of uh, taking tensor products, okay, just simply taking the products, okay. So, tensor product should be thought as taking product of basis elements okay so in a more abstract way so basically we are we are taking that uh, uh, monomials in the basis elements v1 etc vn so where vis don't satisfy any relations so the symmetric product is going to be again taking product with the symmetric product so that means we can just assume all the variables to commute okay the symmetric product means again taking product of basis elements but we just assume all the variables commute okay so, these are all the two different products that we have seen now. So, now we are going to see another product, okay. So, in which whenever some variable repeats, so we just want it, want that product to be 0, okay. So, that is where the exterior products comes in. So, what is exterior product? So, this is in some sense the way you want to think. So, you want to think that it is just taking the product of vi1 etc vik, but if some variable repeats, then we want to think that as 0, we want to take the product as 0. Okay. So, this is this is what the exterior product gives us. So, we do not want v times v. So, v square should be 0. Okay. So, uh, of course, all these products actually uh, are different. So, that is why we can use different different notations. For the tensor products, we use the tensor v i 1 tensor etcetera v i k. For the symmetric product, we can just simply write it as v i 1 times etcetera v i k. For the exterior product, we use v i 1 wedge etcetera wedge v i k. So, sometimes this is also called wedge product. Okay. So, how one can actually construct this uh, uh, using algebraic ideas? So, let us uh, start with this two sided ideal, let us call it J. So, you take this two sided ideal, two sided ideal generated by. So, now what we want, we want uh, just to declare that whenever two variable repeats that should be 0. So, then you can easily see that simply you can just take the two side ideal which is generated by V tensor V where V actually runs over capital V. If we take this ideal and then if we go modulo this ideal in T of V then we get what is our the exterior algebra. Okay. So, again we start with V being just a vector space. So, this construction valid for any vector space uh, over complex numbers. Okay. One can do all these things in much more generality over general ring, commutative ring and so on. So, we, we do not we do not require it in that generality. 
we just focus on only the vector space level. So, we have this uh, uh, this natural uh, algebra. So, you can actually see that uh, the same ideal using this uh, simple uh, technique playing with the bilinear bilinearity of the tensor product, the same ideal is indeed generated by V tensor W plus W tensor V for all V W in capital. Okay. So, this is I will leave it as exercise, this is two sided ideal. Sided ideal generated by this V tensor W plus W tensor V. So, the way you observe this for example, if you just calculate V plus W tensor V plus W then it is exactly equal to V tensor V plus V tensor W plus W tensor V plus W tensor W. Now, suppose V tensor V is 0 that means all these things becomes 0. So, that means this is also 0 and if this is 0 if and only if all these things will be 0 because we can take W to be V. So, using this identity one can observe that these two ideals are same. So, there is no difficulty, but uh, it is easy to see that uh, this is again graded uh, elements. Okay. So, J is indeed a uh, graded ideal. So, this is again indeed graded ideal. So, that means the algebra that we are going to get is graded algebra. Okay. So, now you can look at this natural uh, quotient map from T of V to lambda of V. So, let us call it pi. Okay. So, this natural map again if you take the image of T k of V. So, that is if you denote it by T lambda k of V. So, this will be the kth graded, graded piece or graded space. Okay. So, now this lambda k of V is what is called kth exterior product. Okay. So, this is indeed called kth exterior product. So, under this map one can actually denote uh, general this uh, W 1 etcetera W k to be the image of this we can just denote it by the wedge product. So, this is just a notation. So, what is important about this uh, product is that whenever some variable repeats in this product okay, then we just take it to be 0. Okay. So, with that observation one can easily see that all the images of basis elements coming from T k of V that is going to actually give you spanning set for lambda k of V. But since no two uh, that uh, basis elements of capital V in the world uh, that comes from this basis of T k of V should not repeat. So, that is going to give us uh, this uh, smaller spanning set. So, this is span by so, it is uh, not that difficult to verify. So, you take all possible V i 1, wedge etcetera, wedge V i k. Now, this i 1 etcetera, i k should not repeat. Okay. So, this i 1 uh, and i 2 and so on i k all of them should be distinct. You can easily see that uh, this relation actually tells whenever you switch V and W in the simple tensors all you are paying is minus. Okay. So, V w the v wedge w is same as w wedge v. So, using that relation v wedge w equal to minus w wedge v. So, using this relation you can see that you can arrange this tensors in the increasing order. So, all i 1 etcetera i k must be distinct and you can arrange them in the increasing order to get the minimal spanning set. So, that is the only condition that we are going to impose. So, this i 1 etcetera i 2 are increasing and they comes from 1 to n 
and that will form a spanning set for lambda k of v. And it, this natural minimal spanning set is going to be a basis. Okay, so this is indeed a basis for lambda k of v. So now it's not very hard to see lambda k of v is zero for all k greater than n because if you have more than n plus one elements, then you can see that if you pick this i one etc i k from that n plus one, at least one of them should repeat. Okay, so that means the product will become zero. So there is no non-trivial element inside lambda k of v that spans. So, and it is not hard to see lambda 0 of v will be just the complex number, lambda 1 of v will be just uh, your capital V and lambda n v again. So, it will be spanned by this uh, nth exterior product. So, you have to choose k to be n and if you are choosing n distinct elements from 1 to n, there is only one choice. So, this has to be just v1 wedge etc vn. Okay. So, this must be this one dimensional space spanned by v1 wedge etc vn. So, and uh, now since this is the basis of this lambda k of v, so it is easy to see that the dimension of this uh, lambda k of v is just a binomial coefficient which is n choose k because you are choosing k distinct elements from given 1 to n. So, that is that is why it is a binomial coefficient. Okay. So, now uh, if we start with the g module, let us say v is a g module. So, then it is not hard to see the relation that we are going modulo. So, that is indeed a g invariant relation. Okay. So, this is the ideal j is g invariant. So, j is g invariant. So, why? Because if you apply x v dot tensor v uh, tensor v, then this is going to give us x v tensor v plus v tensor x v. So, now you can actually uh, uh, just add and subtract x v and x v. So, it is actually easy to verify for the other relations, maybe I will do that. You take this v tensor w plus w tensor v, then it is easy. So, let us do that. Take uh, x acting on v tensor w, then we know that uh, this is x v tensor w plus v tensor x w. So, now if you take x acting on v tensor w plus w tensor v, then we get x v tensor w plus v tensor x w plus x w tensor v plus w tensor x v. So, now you can see that you can group these two elements and then you can group uh, these two elements. Okay, so, then this is again inside j. So, this tells us that uh, the ideal which is uh, generate uh, which, which is j generated by this v tensor w plus w tensor v that is invariant under g action. So, that makes that uh, the quotient space again. So, that implies that the quotient space is again a g module. So, that means this exterior algebra is a g one. Okay. So, now if we take this particular uh, uh, lambda k of v, you can easily see that this is indeed a g sub module. So, that is because if you take, you can just apply it on the basis element and then see what you are getting. So, the action is induced from the tensor product. So, the how uh, this x is acting on the wedge, let us see. So, if you take x acting on this wedge v i 1 etc v i k, so this has to be just a sum of the, it, it has to act as a derivation. So, it has to be sum of this x uh, v i 1 wedge etc wedge v i k okay, plus etc plus uh, v i 1 
v i 1 which etcetera which x v i k. Okay. So, this is uh, now using the property of and skew symmetrization you can actually rewrite in terms of uh, the elements of uh, this uh, kth wedge products actually one can just use the linearity no issue like so you can see that this x v i v i a v i 1 is going to be linear combination of some v j's okay because this is an element of g so so whatever it is so this is going to be just a some summation k j v j now if you take this wedge product it will commute with the summation so you can see that this is going to be again some linear combination of k wedge product okay so that means this is inside this uh, wedge kv so this makes actually this uh, lambda kv as also g sub module so that means this lambda v being direct sum of lambda k v okay where k ranging from 0 to n this is indeed g module decomposition okay so indeed actually we have uh, given given uh, v module g we have created like lots of lots of new examples from that if we start with uh, uh, G module V, then we have the tensors, we have this, the symmetric tensors and we have this exteriors okay, which is isomorphic to S k of V and then we also have this lambda k of V. So, we want to see now like is there any natural sub module of T k of V which is again isomorphic to this lambda k of V. Okay. So, that is what actually gives what is called alternating tensors. Okay. So, the correct things to replace here is the alternating tensors, alternating tensors. So, which is analogous to this symmetric tensors. Okay. This is the symmetric tensors. So, let us see the definition. Again, we can use the natural uh, SK action on the TK of V. So, recall that SK acts on TK of V by just permuting the tensor components, okay, by permuting the tensor components. So, that actually gives this natural SK action. So, now what we can do, we can actually define this alternating space. Okay. So, this is the just uh, you take collect all the vectors that comes from T k of V when you apply the action of sigma on W. So, now what we expect we do not want it to be invariant we want some sign to pop up. Okay. See you look at the relation that we gone modulo uh, to get the exterior algebra. So, whenever you switch x V and W so, whenever you switch V and W, we are getting the minus, okay. This V wedge W is same as minus W H V. So, that means whenever I switch the tensor components, then we want to get the minus side. So, now if you take any permutation and then if you apply the permutation, you can easily see that any permutation can be written as product of what is called the simple transpositions like the pro, tran, product of transposition which is i j. So, whenever you switch i and j to position of the tensor product, you are going to get 1 minus sign. So, if you use any permutation and then do this, then you are going to get the sign of that permutation. Okay. So, that is what you demand here in the tensor. You take those vectors coming from this uh, uh, T k of v such that when you apply sigma on w then you expect that you get the sign of sigma okay this is the sign sign of sigma and then that has coefficient for this so now you can easily say, see that if sigma is actually a non trivial transposition which actually flips i and j so then this sigma w is becomes minus w okay 
so that is why you need to have what is called this uh, anti symmetrization to get this alternating uh, tensors so let us actually write down that map very explicitly so as before we also have this natural quotient map from t of v to this wedge v so now we can take this natural quotient map and then restrict to this alternating tensor okay so this is going to be a map from the alternating tensor to naturally to this uh, kth wedge product because uh, one can actually see that uh, the kth wedge product is the image of the uh, tk of v okay so and uh, by definition the alt kv sits inside tk of v okay so this is the kth which product so there is this natural map so indeed what one can prove it this is indeed vector space isomorphism so this is indeed vector space isomorphism okay the inverse map is given by what is called anti symmetrization or the skew symmetrization so the inverse map so let us write the inverse map to be some phi so this is the skew symmetrization or anti symmetrization so this is a map from lambda kv to this alt kv which is an element inside tkf which is sits inside tkf so what is this map you take any wedge product w1 wedge etc wedge wk so which will be some basic element inside lambda kf okay so it's enough to define it on this and the next and uh, linearly okay for example you can do it on the basis so now if you take this w1 etc wedge etc wk so what you do you just send it to the summation now only we are doing this anti symmetrization we can just take the sign of uh, this sigma and then we just apply it here w sigma 1 etc w sigma k where sigma runs over is k okay it's easy to check this element is indeed an element inside alt k of v and if you start with the basis of lambda k v which is the natural basis that we have already given so v i1 wedge etc wedge v i k so where i1 is strictly less than i k and then comes from between 1 to n if we take this and then take its image to be that uh, t i1 etc t i k so which is let us say phi of v i 1 wedge etc v i k. So these, these elements will form a natural basis ok. So these elements form a natural basis for alt k v. So this is what called skew symmetrization and then using that one can actually get basis of this alt k v ok. So now uh, it is not that hard to see that this alt k v is a g module if uh, v is a g module ok. So observe that if v is a g module then alt k v is also a g module. So why that is true because the action of G commutes with the action of uh, SK and this is actually uh, the alt KV is defined using the action of SK. Now from this equation you can see that so if I take some element W in alt KV and then X in G and then let us say sigma in SK then what we get is so if we want to prove that x w must be inside alt k v let us apply sigma on x w since the action of sigma and x commutes so this is going to be x sigma w but x uh, sigma w must be the sign of sigma times w so this is going to be give, giving us sign of sigma x w so from this equation you can see that x w is again element of alt k v. So that means alt k v is a g module ok. So now if we go back to that uh, 
map fee that we have or this uh, natural restriction of the quotient map. So, this map will be again G module isomorphism. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check. Uh, so, the natural G module structure on T of V and lambda V makes actually this pi G module map because this pi is a G module map when you restrict to this uh, respective uh, sub modules again it will be a G module map and since it is already a vector space isomorphism. So, this becomes actually G module isomorphism. So, indeed uh, we have uh, this uh, new representations coming from the, the alternative, alternating tensors or the wedge products. Okay. So, indeed uh, it is uh, really a very hard problem to actually uh, construct or construction is easy to understand for example, like uh, what happens when we actually use all this uh, uh, like basically they are functors okay, on given G modules. Okay. There are these uh, new things that we have learnt. Okay. One is taking the tensors and taking the symmetric tensors or what is called the sim. Okay. So, there is something called sim and we also have what is called alt. Okay. So, basically given V module one will be able to associate T k of V, sim k of V and this alt k of V. Okay. So, here is the natural question. Suppose if we know some information about V, for example, let us say V is just irreducible module, then what are all the information that one can actually expect on these modules? And you can see that even in SL2 theory, these questions actually becomes much more harder. For example, what we can do, we can actually take all possible like permutation combination and then keep applying things. Okay. For example, one can take sim power 3 and then alt power 4 on some representation V. And similarly, one can take the dual sim power k and then alt power L and then we can again apply sim power some L dash on some V and then we can take the dual and so on. Okay. So, we can actually do all kind of uh, different different uh, things and then we can apply it on given uh, using the given module. Okay. We have give from the given module we have V, V dual and then the tensors corresponding tensors and the home and so on. So, so many modules that we have already introduced. So, using them we can actually create lots of lots of examples like this. But there are some basic questions that one can ask which will be not easy to actually answer. So, for example, like if we start with V being just V of M, okay. now we can just simply ask, so what will be the sim k of V of M? Okay. So, what is we already know that uh, the module is completely reducible. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to think about it like can we actually write down explicitly the irreducible uh, decomposition of this sim k of v of m. Okay. So, it is not that easy. Okay. So, I will leave uh, some important uh, exercise. So, if we take for example, v tensor v then you can actually define the sim 2 of v and then alt 2 of v. Then one can prove that this v tensor v is indeed a direct sum of these two spaces. Okay. And we will see later that uh, the what this means indeed uh, uh, in terms of matrices and so on. So, basically it is writing that given matrix as as symmetric matrix plus q symmetric matrix. Okay. 
So, if V is a G module, then one can prove that this is indeed G module decomposition, G module decomposition. Okay, I will leave it to you to check this. Okay, I will uh, stop here and then uh, I will continue with uh, some other constructions uh, of uh, representations in the next class. So, mainly we want to actually understand uh, these uh, bilinear forms on uh, bilinear forms that can be defined on the Lie algebra and uh, using some again uh, representations of Lie algebras. Okay, so, we will talk about it in the next class. Thank you, I will stop here.